Hello and welcome back to another edition of Viper Bites Primetime Previews Sunday Night Football where we have the 6-5 and five Denver Broncos heading to Kansas City to take on the 7-4 and four Chiefs in what is expected to be a wild, wild AFC West showdown. Now this AFC West is in fact wild. There are playoff implications all over in this matchup. You've got the 7-4 Chiefs and the 6-5 and five Broncos. You've also got the 6-5 and five Chargers and the 6-5 and five Raiders all jockeying for that top dog status in that AFC West division. But before we get into this tale of tape, take a second, give us a good old-fashioned thumbs up on the Vipers Network if you're watching us live. And if you're watching us, why don't you subscribe? It's just a click away. Also, if you're listening to us on Apple, Spotify, Pocket Cast, Anchor, whatever that podcasting platform may be, take a moment, rate and review the show. And as always, if you've got questions, I've got answers. You're looking for that fantasy football edge, some fantasy football advice, hit me up on Twitter at Matt Donnelly FF. Now let's dive in. Let's head over to the Denver Broncos sideline. Let's talk about Teddy Bridgewater, who, for all intents and purposes, has been the definition of average this season. He sits as the QB 18, and he's averaging. 175.7 175.7 fantasy points this season, in which he's also seen games five games of 19 or more fantasy points. He's also seen five games with less than 15 fantasy points. Luckily for him, the Chiefs are allowing, on average, 19.8 fantasy points per game. And Bridgewater, he does have some weapons at his disposal here, whether that be Sutland, Judy, Patrick, Javante Williams, Melvin Gordon, Noel Font. There are weapons there. He just needs to learn how to use them effectively. Now, Those numbers for the Chiefs, and defensively speaking, are a little bit misconstrued here. The Chiefs have been playing much better as of late as they kick Chris Jones back inside. Now, they have allowed 2,884 passing yards, 17 touchdowns this season. But Broncos fans, I know what you're waiting for. You're waiting for Teddy Bridgewater. The Teddy Bridgewater from back in Carolina, where he supported three top 24 wide receivers. But... When you're 18th in passing with 2,518 yards, that's probably not going to happen. In his defense, he does have a 3-to-1 touchdown-interception ratio, but he's only tossed 15 touchdowns this season. Now, at the running back position, you've got Melvin Gordon. You've got Javante Williams. Now, Gordon exited briefly last week, and the fantasy world was fully anticipated, fully excited, gearing up for Javante Williams' season. But Gordon had other plans. He's like, yeah, no, it's just a flesh wound. I'm going to get back out there. That ain't happening. I ain't losing my job. Now, let's take a deeper look at these running backs. Now, Williams has forced a missed tackle 36% of the time, which is the highest since 2006 for backs with a minimum of 100 attempts. Yeah, rewind that. Listen back to that. That is huge. Now, against the Chargers, Williams saw 58% of the snaps to Gordon's 42 He ran routes 59% of the time to Gordon's 24. He saw four targets to Gordon's two, but it was Gordon who outcarried Javante Williams once again, 17 to 14. On those 17 carries, Melvin Gordon, he was productive and he was efficient. He was able to put up 89 yards and had 4.9 yards per carry to Williams' 3.9 average that led to 54 yards on the ground and that touchdown. Now, Williams' value, where he really steps out from Melvin Gordon, is in the passing game where he had three receptions. And you know what? He had that nice 42-yard catch and run that kind of showed a little bit of that excitement that fantasy managers are drooling over every time Williams gets an opportunity with the ball in his hand. Now, as of Thursday, Melvin Gordon's status was 50-50. He's still battling that bit of a hip injury. And tongue-in-cheek, I think a lot of managers are kind of hoping that, you know, he sits this one out. But like the rest of us, Melvin Gordon is technically day-to-day. And here we go. We are moving along to the wide receiver position because I don't want to get too much into where I'm believing on this Broncos because I'm a huge Javante Williams guy. But Melvin Gordon, he has been very effective in his opportunities. Now, a wide receiver, Jerry Judy and the Broncos wide receivers, you would think that considering that the Chiefs are allowing the fourth most fantasy points to quarterbacks, that this would be a favorable matchup for the wide receivers. But that is not the case. Kansas City is actually ranked ninth in fantasy points allowed to opposing wideouts, which is kind of limits that ceiling for all these patch, pass catchers here. Now, Kansas City has allowed 33.22 fantasy points per game. They have allowed 1,607 yards receiving, and they have allowed 11 touchdowns in 11 games. 
Now, Judy, since returning from his injury back in week eight, he really hasn't brought much fantasy value. In fact, he's literally been the kiss of death when it comes to fantasy production for Broncos wideouts. In four games since he has returned, he has, to his credit, posted 11 or more fantasy points twice, but he's also posted eight or less twice as well. He has 18 receptions and 24 targets and two touchdowns. But his most productive receiving game was a 69-yard performance in Week 9 against the Dallas Cowboys. Now, where I mentioned this kiss of death, Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick, I will give this to you straight. Since Judy has come back, Sutton is averaging 23.8 yards per game. He is averaging 1.8 reception per game. Over the last four, Sutton has seven receptions for 95 yards and has failed to score. That adds up to a whopping 15 fantasy points. And that's using PPR scoring to kind of inflate those numbers a little bit. Without Judy, Sutton had three games alone in which he recorded 23 or more fantasy points, three games in which he had 90 or more receiving yards. With Judy, Sutton has seen 12 total targets. 12 total targets. He had 14 targets in one game against the Raiders back in week number six and has seen at least five or more targets in every game in which Judy has not been involved in. Tim Patrick, on the other hand, has literally leapfrogged Sutton in fantasy scoring and now sits one spot ahead of him and one and a half points ahead of him as the wide receiver 35. Patrick, too, was more productive with Judy out of the lineup, producing four games in which he had 12 or more fantasy points and a feat in which he's only accomplished once since Judy has been reinserted into the lineup. Now, Patrick has seen five or more targets in two of the last three games, which means he may be getting a little bit more love from Teddy Two Gloves than Sutton has. And you know what? That's probably going to be the case moving forward as well. It's hard to trust any Broncos pass catcher. I say pass catcher because we're going to move into another one here in a second. And honestly, if I'm buying for a playoff position right now, I'm probably leaving these guys on my bench. Now, whatever I said about Cortland Sutton, you literally can copy and paste that for Noah Fant. Fant still ranks 12th in fantasy points among tight ends, but in his last four games, he, his production, it has not been there. Outside of that five-catch, 59-yard performance against the Eagles in Week 10, he has failed to record more than 40 yards in three of the last four games and failed to even manage 15 yards in two of those games. There is a glimmer of hope if you are forced to start Fant this week, and it's the fact that the Chiefs are ranked 25th in fantasy points against tight ends, allowing 14.96, while allowing the fifth most receiving yards to the opposing tight ends, who have hauled in 59 receptions for 696 yards. Now let's move on to the explosive Chiefs offense here and talk about, basically, it, it's weird seeing Patrick Mahomes fifth in passing yards, but that's what 3,200 yards gets you this year. His 25 touchdowns ranks third, and his 11, 11 interceptions is tied for the fourth most this season. But even in a down year, Mahomes is still averaging 21.85 fantasy points per game. Okay, his 240.36 fantasy points. That is still good enough to place him fifth amongst all quarterbacks. Fifth in the entire league, I even believe. Don't fact check that. Now, after the starting the season with four straight games with more than 20 fantasy points, Mahomes has failed to record a decent start, which I would consider 17 or more fantasy points, in four of the last five contests. In fact, of those contests, he hasn't even been able to hit that top 20 fantasy option at the quarterback position. Don't expect Denver to make it easy on Mahomes this week either. The Broncos have allowed 15 passing touchdowns. That is the ninth best mark in the league while picking off opposing quarterbacks 10 times, which is all part of their top four ranking when it comes to fantasy points allowed to the quarterback position this season. Now, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, he returned just before the bye week and was out snapped by Daryl Williams, 53 to 47. And that's Daryl with one L, just in case anyone was wondering. Now, Clyde Edwards Hilaire showed plenty of promise in that game, averaging 5.3 yards per carry, finishing with 63 yards on the ground, and manufacturing a touchdown on one of those 12 carries. Now, before his injury back in Week 5, Edward Slayer had posted two consecutive 100 rushing yard performances, and with the bye week and giving him that little extra week to recover, I wouldn't be shocked if he kind of flirts with that mark sooner rather than later once again. It just might not be this week. Denver is also good at limiting fantasy production towards fantasy backs 
ranking ninth in points allowed, allowing 963 yards rushing and the fourth fewest touchdowns to running backs on the ground. Now, as for Daryl Williams, he's averaging 11.5 fantasy points per game and produced double-digit fantasy points in four of the last five contests before Edwards Hilaire returned and limited him to six touches. Now, with the presumed workload transferring back to Clyde Edwards Hilaire and the production Edwards Hilaire had pre-injury, along with the production that Daryl Williams was able to put forth in relief, things are looking good for fantasy managers that are rostering Edwards Hilaire down the stretch. Tyreek Hill faces a Broncos defense that ranks 13th in fantasy points so far allowed, allowing 33.82 per game and have yielded 1,732 yards and 11 touchdowns to wide receivers this season. I can't wait to watch this unfold. A battle between Tyreek Hill and rookie Patrick Sertain. Now, I'm not sure how often we'll get an opportunity to see that, but it certainly gets my adrenaline pumping. Look, Hill, while he's experienced some extreme boom and bust weeks, seriously, he's been outside of the top 12 on six occasions. That means he's been inside the top 12 only five times. But you know what? If you look at the stat sheet, he's second in receptions with 84, second in targets with 122, trailing Cooper Cup in both those categories, fifth in yards with 932, and fourth in touchdowns with eight. Through 11 games, he trails only Cooper Cup and Debo Samuel, who is likely going to miss some time there with that groin injury, in PPR scoring with 232 fantasy points. Hill comes into this one one with a little more consistency, finishing with more than 20 fantasy points in three of the last four contests, with that exception being the Green Bay game in week number nine, where he had 11 targets, but he only had four receptions for 37 yards. Speaking of targets, he has seen nine or more, in eight straight games. Now, Brian Pringle, McCole Harmon, I'm not even sure why we continue to talk about the Chiefs' third option in the passing game. It really is Hill and Travis Kelsey. I may even argue that Clyde Hilaire becomes a third option now that he's back. Technically, Harmon has 59 targets and 42 receptions, which is a little bit of a, a surprise. I literally had to fact check that twice just to make sure I could get that on there and actually make it an honest video here. Now, the Chiefs, they do have five pass catchers that are averaging 10 yards or more per reception this season with a minimum of 15 receptions. That's Hill, that's Hardman, that's Travis Kelsey, that's Demarcus Robinson, and that's Brian Pringle, who also leads the team with 14.7 yards per reception. Now, when looking at Hardman versus Pringle, it's Hardman that leads in receptions, 42 to 23, targets 59 to 32, yards 424 to 338. But it's Pringle, who has a three-to-one edge when it comes to dance-offs in the end zone. Now, speaking of guys who know how to dance, know how to get jiggy with it, Travis Kelsey. I'm not sure it matters to Travis Kelsey that the Broncos are fifth in fantasy points against and the fact that the Broncos have only given up one touchdown to tight ends all season. Kelsey continues to be in a league of his own. His 183 fantasy points are not only good enough to be recognized as the top fantasy tight end, but that number, that 183.5, would also rank him ninth amongst wide receivers just behind Jamar Chase. Let that sink in for a second again. And this is supposed to be like a down year for Kelsey. Now, Kelsey ranks seventh in receptions with 67, 11th in targets with 97, 10th in yards with 821 among all pass catchers. Not tight ends, pass catchers. If you could insert a top eight tight end week in and week out, it would be Kelsey. He's literally been doing it all season with the exception of maybe one or two games. and. Like Hill's matchup, I can't wait to see Kelsey versus Simmons this week. This is going to be, oh man, I'm excited. This is exactly why the Broncos are built to play the Chiefs all the way up and down the line. You want to limit Kelsey's production? Just do what the Eagles did in back week four. Don't cover Tyreek Hill. That's the only way you're going to slow down Travis Kelsey. With that, man... We are excited for this match, but I'm also excited for FantasyPoints.com. You want to get that subscription to the best uh, analytics, the best information, the best stats and facts? Head over there, FantasyPoints.com. Once again, enter promo code 21VIPERS10. Get 10% off that subscription today. And with that being said, you know what? We are on to Monday Night Football. 